questions? Welcome to the Creative Lab, the Celestial Cycles Planning the Future. We invite you to start your videos for the beginning of our time together that we can connect <coughs> visually and recognizing our unity. Today it's a very special gathering that we have. It's an, first of all, it's unusual. Time. Happy to say a really good morning as it's early morning in the <laughs> Eastern coast. And we welcome everyone. So I invite uh, Dot Maver to start on the behalf of the Global Silent Minutes, our work together. Thank you, Alexander. It's good to see everyone and be together via this wonderful Zoom connection. And again, for those coming in right now, please do open your video. And we have, it, there are numerous, um, 38 of us now on the call and just take a moment and see who our brothers and sisters are as we join together. We will take a moment to unite our hearts across distance. So we become aware of who is on the call today. And as we connect through the one heart, we also connect with those on the other side of the veil with whom we cooperate. The power of silence is greater than we know. So let us enter the silence now with the intention of silence as action. Welcome everyone to this online creative lab, the celestial cycles, planning the future, which grew out <clears throat> of an intergroup idea stemming from a request by the Global Silent Minute Initiative, as we strive to gain a deeper understanding of the energies during this time of approach to the December 21st solstice minute of silence at 9 p.m. GMT and the greater cycle and cycles that are all shifting, that we are all living through in this beautiful moment in time on this planet. So TPS, the Planetary System, and the 2025 initiative expressed a shared interest in this deeper understanding and thus this creative lab was born. And we are in for a treat as Antonella and Maura with the group Prototype for a Planetary Order, whose website is theplanetarysystem.org, will present the main cycles and directions of the solar system, presented on the basis of the text from linear to cyclical time. 
and we will together creatively attune to the causal music of the spheres in the light of the epochal turning point we are experiencing and in preparation for the auspicious date of 2025. TPS, the planetary system offers ideas, formulas and forms for a new culture, a new civilization. We are grateful and thank you, Antonella and Mara, over to you. Thanks, Dot, for the wonderful <laughs> presentation. And uh, actually, we are more than two of this uh, prototype for a planetary order today. I see at least seven, <laughs> good number for us, as we base our work and thought on the uh, seven rays model and hierarchical uh, 49 ashramic um, number. Okay, so uh, we can begin um, by turning off our uh, webcams and uh, I will share my screen. Okay. And uh, just to make sure, Antonella, you did the advanced sharing, right? Yeah, I did, I did. Great. Thank you. Thank you for double checking. <laughs> okay. So, um, it's a great uh, honor to share all together this uh, theme of the cycles. We know from the teachings that the science of cycles is part of the esoteric astrology. They are the transits, as the ordinary astrology called them. And we are um, here um, diving into this study, which uh, has been... Um, formalized or began in the uh, 80s. Um, so it's uh, almost 30 years that we have been studying the hierarchy of cycles uh, where we uh, move, live, and are. And uh, so we are going to focus on uh, both the heliocentric perspective and the geocentric perspective. And this is a wonderful sentence uh, or shloka from Agni Yoga, which uh, recommends uh, from this perspective to focus, to converge within the sun, to realize the entire grandeur of cosmos, conceive the sun as a guarantee of a new science. Okay, so we are going also to use this text which is published on the TPS uh, blog in, in three languages you find also in uh, in the English one uh, in the documents page this was written in uh, 2012 when TPS began because we we are a group that began in 1987 numbering our years as goals and each year was one of a 49 first cycle. So in 2012, we were leaving the fifth year of the fourth septennium of our endeavor. And so we decided to manifest um, the, um, to publish, to share online, which is the manifestation of the general mentality, the online, uh, to manifest um, these uh, thoughts, uh, con converging and concentrating on uh, the heavens and the rhythm of heavens as a model and uh, possibility to plan the future or to read the past in a scientific uh, way. 
So this uh, document has um, these seven chapters, the cycle, hierarchy of cycles and numbers, the solar system, life quality appearance, triad of cycles, value of the cycle and direction and solar rituality. And the uh, um, published uh, rhythm of TPS follows the conjunction of the main planets in the solar system, because we think as the uh, builders uh, in the, or the cathedrals or, or the past cultures, that if we align to these uh, higher magnets, to the crossing between planes in the heavens, we assure the good health of a new culture and civilization. Okay, so let's start with uh, a bit of philosophical um, philosophical uh, view of what can be understood with the word cycle. Okay, so cycle is a, a way to name time. Um, let's see what is here in the note. Etymologically, the word time comes from the Indo-European root tem, which expresses the idea of sharing, separating, temno, I divide, I separate, Latin tempus. It's important to note that it has the same root as the word temple, indicating the sacred yard. So the Indo-European root tam expresses the idea of measure, m, in Sanskrit, or the motion between two points, the letter T, so that time was considered as a fragment of light and the temple a space consecrated to the gods. Isn't it marvelous? <laughs> okay, let's go back. Yeah, and whenever we need to share uh, a question or other things, please do raise in your hand. Uh, so according, so time is usually conceived of as a quantitative or linear succession of uniform instants, indistinctly linking past, present and future. They, we think that days are all the same. According to the Eastern and Western esoteric philosophy, time can also be recognized as a succession of states of consciousness, each of which is unique and unrepeatable, unrepeatable in its own quality. Let's go back to the quotes from uh, Decay. Time and space are simply models of ideas to express the cyclical activity of an entity, of a planet, of a solar logos, of a uh, planetary logos, of a galactic logos, and so on. Outside of manifestation, time doesn't exist. Outside of objectivity, states of consciousness don't exist. Time has been described as a succession of states of consciousness. So the essence of qualitative time is unveiled by the idea of the cycle. Cycle, again, is a word that comes from the Greek kiklos, which means circle, round. It contains in itself the idea of circularity, that is of return, but actually being a spiral, each coil will never see its end match its beginning. This gap of difference or difference, which is the step of the spiral, represents the progress achieved from the qualitative point of view, that is, it expresses the evolutive advancement of the cycle. According to this understanding, the cycle or cyclical time is a rhythmic vortex of energy bestowed with quality. 
the spatial expression of the motion of the states of consciousness of universal and particular evolution. So the style is quite philosophical. <laughs> but as Plato said, we have to begin from the world of ideas downwards. So the cycle is the creative spiral of life that introduces into space the energies necessary for evolution. They are the breaths of the logois. The cycle, among its main qualities, has an infinite capacity for containing. For example, each day, which is a cyclical rotation of the planet around its axis, polar axis, contains all the other past days since the mists of time. Therefore, it operates a continuous and progressive action of updating, another name for evolution. Furthermore, despite each cycle in its structure being basically identical to any other, there are countless hierarchies of evolution among them. We can recognize greater cycles that contain lesser cycles. To study the cycles means to think of the purpose, nature and essence of life. It also leads to the supposition that the energy of life has its own plan or evolutionary project carried out to reach the purpose through the constant yet rhythmic production of forms and the progressive evolution of their quality. We know that quality is uh, quite a, an, in, an important word with life and appearance is the second aspect of reality. So it pertains uh, actually the, the soul level between spirit and matter. Quality, consciousness, soul are different names for the same uh, aspect of reality, reality, the second one, the main one of our current uh, solar logos cycle. Okay, second, ch second chapter. Since everything is in motion, so you, you can see in, um, in blue, in, uh, I outlined just uh, the things um, for this webinar, but of course you are invited to check uh, all the text, which by the way, uh, was recently translated also into Spanish, thanks to Pablo who is here today. So thanks to our co-workers which made an astounding work to translate. Since everything is in motion, oscillating, vibrating and evolving, the point of view and vision must accordingly be so too. The supreme capacity of dynamism, spirit, makes that point safe, paradoxically stable, balanced and free. So this, uh, the point of view, the idea of a point of view to study the cycles. So, in this attempt to think of space and time in qualitative terms, circumscribing the system of points of view to the cycles of our macrocosm, the galaxy, its most significant breaths or celestial motions according to the exoteric or esoteric consciousness. So these are our theme today. Let's start from the solar orbit of the, our solar logos uh, manifestation, current manifestation uh, in the solar system. The solar orbit around the center of the galaxy of around 250 million terrestrial years which accompanies four motions of oscillation of the old solar system above and under the galactic equator, here is in the picture, of around these um, uh, curves, 64 million years each, presently directed to the celestial point called our apex between the Vega star and the Hercules constellation good direction for the 
labels of humanity and solar humanity. Sources of the esoteric tradition mention a rotational seven solar system. Let's go to check the um, quotes, wonderful quotes from uh, the Theosophist and uh, Treatise of Cosmic Fire. So here is the concept of Kalpa, which is a cycle. A Kalpa is the portion of time which intervenes between one conjunction of all the planets on the horizon of Lanka, which means shining island, at the first point of Aries, and a subsequent similar conjunction. These figures are not fanciful, but are founded upon astronomical facts. So also astrology beginning at the first point of Aries, it's based on astronomical crossing between two planes, as we are going to see later. Great as the period of the Maha Kalpa seems to be, we are assured that thousands and thousands of millions of such Maha Kalpas have passed, and as many more has, are yet to come. And this in plain language means that the time past is infinite and the time to come is equally infinite. The universe is formed, dissolved and reproduced in an in in indeterminate, indeterminate succession. Okay, so going on from the uh, galactic revolution of the solar uh, system, we can consider this rotation of seven solar systems, including ours, our local universe, around the star Alcyone in the Pleiades. The four jot stars are open cluster in the constellation of the Bow, defined as the focal point from and we in which the divine breath, the divine movement unceasingly works during the Manvantara, the manifestation. This rotation occurs every 250,000 years, a cycle unknown to ordinary astronomy and significantly in accordance both with the revolution around the galactic center, 250 millions, and the precessional cycle of about 25,000 years of our Earth polar axis, originally called indeed Great Year of the Pleiades, we know also that the number 25 is related to the fourth ray, ray to the fourth ray cycle, as uh, two five is uh, one fourth of the unity, of the one. So it's interesting that um, both astronomy and uh, esoteric astrology um, uh, refers to these uh, great cycles based all on these two five numbers. Two five uh, are numbers of the mother or the, yeah, mother, but uh, in Venus Christ aspect, second and fifth ray, Venus, Jupiter, and so on. And so are really part of this um, second ray, uh, if you like, manifestation, second aspect. The current solar system is trying to uh, develop uh, the consciousness aspect of all its creatures, not the life aspect, which will be in the next solar system, and not anymore, uh, or not only, the matter or substance aspect, which was in the previous third solar system. <clears throat> So our bodies, also the bodies of planets, we can think they uh, respond to the third aspect of the previous solar system, but are all um, progressing and pointing to the second aspect of la reality, which is consciousness, soul, and quality. The seven rays are actually the seven qualities of life um, and the solar uh, logoi that uh, transmit to us, to our solar system, um, 
these seven rays are really our um, main golden home, if you like, the main source of our evolution and existence. We know that the seven rays come from the great Bia stars, the seven rishis of the great Bia, um, which are the local head center of our local universe. So, um, okay, so the seven solar system, which are related to the seven ratio of the great beer and the seven Pleiades and concentrate then we know in Sirius, uh, which is the egoic uh, aspect of our solar system and um, allegedly of the other six other solar systems. Okay, let's go on. Uh, focusing on the sun, we have the equatorial plane of the sun, the plane perpendicular to its rotation axis, tilted around seven degrees to the terrestrial orbital plane ecliptic, projected to, so this, um, you can think of a sphere, mm, which is the sun, um, the sun has a polar axis, a vertical, a spine, and he has a a belly or a, um, yes, the equatorial plane. And this equatorial plane is tilted of seven degrees respect, in respect to the terrestrial orbital plane, which is the ecliptic. And uh, if uh, you project this uh, equatorial plane to the infinite, inter in it intersects the galactic equator, surprisingly very close to the galactic center between the stars of the archer and those of the scorpion. And of course, at its opposite pole between those of the twins and the ball, our sun is well oriented to the cosmic center. We are going to see other pictures later, which uh, clarify a bit this vision or reality. So we see here, all the ecliptics of the planets, which uh, you can see that are almost um, um, uh, co coplanar, do you say, of the same plan plane. And um, here is the galactic center, which is the intersection between the galactic equator, this line, and the here, the galactic meridian. Okay, and this is the ecliptic. So it's like our solar plane, it's like our common project of the solar um, uh, logoi are, is well oriented towards the position, relative position of the galactic center. And this is <laughs> not by chance. At present, astronomy tells us the line of intersection between the solar equatorial plane and our ecliptic is stands between the ninth and 10th degrees of the constellation of the fishes and the Virgin. You can see that uh, we are using the English names of the constellations when, when we uh, consider them as uh, astronomic entities why the Latin name, so Pisces and Virgo would be, when we consider the, uh, the sign, the astro astrology sign, the astrological sign. Okay, so this intersection, and it's so important to consider the line of intersections between, because they are gates, they are sacred gates between um, planes, between worlds or states of consciousness of the Logoi, which create that plane, that cycle, that motion of their consciousness, manifest consciousness. Okay, so these are the um, intersection. So this uh, reminds us of the importance that we already know of the Pisces and Virgo signs in these, uh, um, procession cycle um, and uh, also for the age which is um, changing now. 
of the of Pi, from Pisces to Aquarius. Okay, and uh, this cycle of um, this intersection of nodes of intersection has a, a complete migration migration every one hundred thousand uh, years, and uh, we know that this uh, number is a first ray cycle. 1, 10, 100, 1,000, and so on, as the case says. The relation between these two planes of our orientations generates this Earth-Sun cycle, which encompasses precisely four processional years of 25,000 years. Again, this relation between 1 and 4. Okay, the squaring of the circle. The orbit then, the, in the hierarchical cycles, we are, as you can, as you haven't seen, we are going from the top to the, um, to below and to the smaller cycle. So we consider now the orbital planes or ecliptics of the planets. Each planet has its own ecliptic but they are all more or less coplanar to our ecliptic, except for the eccentric orbit of Pluto, tilted by 17 degrees. It's our destroyer, but is destroying to allow renewal uh, from the old forms and ties. The line of intersection between our ecliptic and the average one, for example, carries out a complete medium rotation in around uh, 150,000 years, uh, one degree every 423 years. So you see how um, deep in a way is our understanding of the astronomical knowledge of, the ast of some of the ast uh, astronomical cycles and um, and comparing them with uh, what uh, Elena Blavatsky and uh, Alice Bailey uh, gives us uh, in their um, wonderful teaching, we can infer um, things to plan consciously the future. Okay, let's go back. Uh, let's go on. Every planet has its own year, and in year we know that is an annual revolution around the central star, the sun, which extends among traditional luminaries from a minimum of around 90 terrestrial days, Mercury, the fastest, the messenger of the gods, to a maximum of 240 terrestrial years, Pluto, the deepest. Okay, uh, let's jump all this part and let's go on. Okay, third chapter. Um, this is um, uh, space is an infinite living entity. We know from the teachings. Let's see some slides now. Okay. These, as I mentioned, are uh, the heliocentric and geocentric perspective. This is the heliocentric with the sun at the center and here our earth. And this is geocentric perspective with the sun, apparent sun here. Okay, and this is an image that um, mm, summarizes uh, these planes and their points of intersection and let's consider them not as, um, as physical points or astronomical points, but as I said, as gates. The equinoxes, the solstices, which we see uh, here, are the intersection points between this orange circle, which is the ecliptic, which is exactly the revolution path of our Earth around the Sun and the intersection between the ecliptic and this equ um, celestial equator, which is the projection, infinite projection 
of our belly, of our um, terrestrial equator. So it's like <clears throat> the cycle of our identity, of our uh, planetary logos, of our Earth, is one thing. But its circle around the sun, it's like uh, us. It's uh, the Earth with uh, its crew, its solar crew. It's um, our um, home, the solar system. So the intersection between the I and the we, the planet uh, plane, planetary plane, and the solar plane, it's solar, uh, of course, um, in respect relatively to the Earth, but um, it is a solar plane, the ecliptic, gives the vernal equinox the zero point of Aries, uh, even if the case says that the real zero of Aries is not known. But for the um, analogy, analogical uh, law, um, the zero point of um, the current uh, equinox <clears throat> is still this intersection. And from that point, from that day, which is around 23rd of uh, March, and uh, symmetrically the 20, 21 of September, you have these two points, which are two gates for the melting, the merging, the fusion and uh, synthesis between the planetary thoughts and breaths and cycle and planes and the solar plane. And we know that the esoteric astrology starts from Aries and it says that is the first sign, the homeland of ideas, the electric fire, the one. And we have an astronomical um, proof and um, precipitation base for that. This is amazing. And, and so, um, also for the intersection between the ecliptic, the orange circle, and the black circle, which is the galactic equator, we have these two gates, which are exactly, exactly as we said, between the Archer and the Scorpio um, constellations, and <clears throat> opposite between the Ball and the Twins. And if you can um, see um, an astronomical chart is exactly from our um, uh, point of view, or, uh, from our part of the galaxy, this gate is exactly where the arm of the Orion points. The great cosmic Christ Orion, the um, great magnet, uh, which with uh, Sirius, Isis, Osiris and Isis um, rule our part of universe. So the arm of Orion or the stars or the actual uh, stars of Orion points to this anti-galactic center. So this is one of the main gates for our um, study and um, process of uh, increasing love and uh, falling in love with uh, uh, motions and breaths of the heaven, which is in our heart, deeply in our heart. Okay, let's go on. And you can see NCP means uh, <clears throat> is the um, uh, solar, uh, no, sorry, the Polaris is our uh, north <clears throat> planetary um, here is the North Ecliptic Plane, here is the North uh, um, Sea, I don't remember what is um, probably current pole, I don't remember the acronym, what means, but anyways, the Polaris, and here is the North Galactic Pole. Okay, let's go on. And this is um, uh, an image um, which shows the um, sorry for the Italian names, but you can see in yellow the constellation names and uh, in blue the sign name 
and you see this uh, difference between caused by the precessional equinoxes we are seeing later. Okay, so this uh, vernal point uh, here <clears throat> in red is, as we show, the intersection points between the ecliptic, the red circle, and the projection of the equatorial uh, or celestial equator. This tilted 23 uh, and, and half around um, in respect to the ecliptic. Okay. Okay, so we, we have seen the center is either the sun or the earth for this study of the cycles and astrologies. We have seen the field and now we see this common plane, the ecliptic and the different seven rays for each planet irradiated by our sun. Okay. Let's see what number of... Okay. Okay. Here you can see the esoteric um, explanation of cycles of our solar logos and planetary logos. This is a, the famous chart of the evolution of a solar logos. And uh, the cycles we are going to study uh, are of this dimension, actually here on the physical subplane or the physical plane. But the teaching say, says that here you can see the, um, um, you can see the manifestation of uh, all what is not only higher, but uh, deeper. As we know, the Western mind thinks that the best is higher, but the uh, Eastern mind thinks that the best is in uh, more innerly. Uh, are two different ways of uh, functioning of our minds, but to understand the relationship between the oneness uh, in the oneness, we use this um, higher and um, higher system of representing. And here are the uh, seven schemes of evolution. We know that the planets incarnate in different uh, globes, different system of globes in different substantial uh, matter, mental matter, astral matter, etheric matter, and physical one. We now, in our current solar system, we can see some of the globes of these, uh, uh, the case says that we have 70 planets all going in our solar system, but we have manifested almost uh, uh, 10, 10 planets. And so the reality of, um, the cycles of the solar system are much deeper, as many of us know. Okay. Let's go back to the text. So space is an infinite living entity. So the ecliptic is, uh, this is an important point is the solar plane slash plan. So plane as a geometrical entity, but living geometrical entity, and plan as a state of consciousness, project, um, projection into the future, and so on. The ecliptic, the plane crossed by the apparent sun for us, but in actual fact, by the orbital spiral drawn by our, our planet point in motion and in radial tension with the sun at the center is in other words, that plane of we love and light. And we can see, we can say the plan of we love and light, 
which that being engraves in space with its own globe of manifestation. So we can write also plane and plan around the volcano or Vulcan of central life. By extension and by the coplanarity of the planetary ecliptics, it is the solar plane itself arranged by consent of superior designers who we consider and propose as real, live, alive, living, conscious beings, rulers of the planets and the sun. Consider it as an orbital plane, the ecliptic therefore holds the annual cycles or greater breaths through which every planetary being accumulates and distributes the solar and cosmic life evolves and achieves the part of plan that wasn't trusted to him or her or it, trying to progressively perfect, perfect <clears throat> his own planetary forms. Through such a flight plan, punctual and infinite, the planetary being commeasures himself with the other stable and variable orientations of his solar brothers, crossing their ecliptics and arranging with them the vibrant matrix and plot of the common solar plane. He thus contributes to the coordinated and progressive advancement of the solar fleet. He meets the fire of other stellar or cosmic lords, crossing their positions or incidences, wherever they are in the celestial sphere, yet commensurate or projected to his solar horizon, the ecliptic. He arranges the field of development for his kingdoms and creatures. So the consequence extending this to all the planets is the vital and consistent layout of evolution. The multiform plans and the magnetic vortexes of light and sound recorded by the rhythmic motion of the solar systemic life. The rhythm of the solar centers reflected in the visible world through the combined and cyclical motion of the relative planets defines the celestial psychogeometries of the solar system, living geometries with qualities and the science of their vital and psychic meaning, astrology, teaches us to interpret and reveal them as archetypes of ideal formulas, that is, as causative models and vibrations on every planet of all, the of all forms in the subordinate spheres of manifestation, mental, emotional, and physical free worlds. This is the way heaven communicates its eternal and dynamic truth, writing it on the vibrant score of the ecliptics according to directions and cycles made of numbers, sound and light, revealing in progressive and perfectly coordinated measures the various planetary plans as coordinated perspectives of the greater solar plan and of even more elevated or cosmic ones. Okay, we jump this chapter. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, we have already seen the um, evolution chart, evolution of a solar logos chart. Um, um, we can take the, um, it for granted, but we, you can check later this, um, the organization. Um, a Treatise of Cosmic Fire is the best book for diving into this wonderful cosmic structure of us. Okay. Okay. So let's imagine how deeply short-sighted and materialistic ordinary science is and the general attitude that relies on such vision of reality. Subtler and higher dimensions or worlds or spheres are present but unperceivable for the actual five senses or instruments of human science in every point of the universal spatial matrix. How to contact or measure such more elevated, more intimate, more spiritual worlds? 
obviously not through concrete notions or instruments, but through similar means suitable to such subtle, rarefied dimensions. Whilst in certain fields, the subtler vibrations are definitely replacing the more concrete means, internet, money, in other inquiries, we often don't realize that need to change the instrument or measure and to elevate the point of view. We rely on scientists, experts, and so on. But we know that, especially now with the COVID uncertainty, that we have to develop a deeper means of measure and uh, reading of the of reality. Okay. So the main unit of measure of the physical macrocosm is then a distance based on light speed, whilst the different levels or planes of space are distinguished by intensity of vibration, which explains better the wavelength frequency relation of the world of sound, light, and other spatial energies as essentially direction and cycle, not distance, but direction not uh, uniform or linear time, but cycle, qualified time. Okay, the direction cycle relation of vibration is the key to jump levels in the higher or etheric worlds. Direction transcends distance and cycle transcends time. Direction, actually, has no extension and is not subject to relocation. It is an infinite pre-existing line. So the line that unify our, your eye to the screen is an infinite direction and is a vector of power, is a vector of uh, focusing uh, consciousness, intention, love, light, and sound. And we know that, that the energy, um, the thought follows energy and follows also the, where we focus uh, attention. The point of tension is not a name for the plane of evolution. What energy are we using in our consciousness? Are we keeping our minds stay, uh, stable in the light uh, and so on? Okay, so this direction is a, an infinite pre-existing line and alignment activated in this case of the macrocosm uh, uh, perspective by two or more centers in relative motion, irrespective of distance. Furthermore, is the alignment between us and the master, between us and the goal is really a living direction, a living psychogeometry is the shortest, if we consider distance, but is the real, real uni union between us and the other consciousness, with the other center. Furthermore, it is the bearer of quality, as we said, direction. For example, the sun-earth line on the stellar background is different from the earth-moon line, or from the line between co the constellations Orion Ursa Major, or between two galaxies. Okay. Okay. Mauro, if you like to go on in reading, so we alternate the voice. And sorry if I will interrupt very often. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Okay. The width or field depth of a cycle or of a planetary orbit, for example, or of a solar system or of a galaxy indicates and reveals from a qualitative point of view the hierarchic relation between the entities of space. The greater contains the lesser, so a galaxy is a greater globe or field compared to that of a planet or a sun, of course. Yet paradoxically, next to this general rule, the esoteric vision of reality also presents a hierarchy of power not necessarily corresponding to physical dimensions. As in nuclear fission, where we can draw much more energy from an atom than from huge generators of current, 
the points or units or spatial monads are arranged according to their respective centrality, which corresponds to their power or intensity, since a singularity of life rules and influences any collectivity or field, even a constellation, cosmos, or whole universe. The more intense, the more powerful. And if we think that just the candle can give light to an entire room, it's just this. So in these dark times, we know that uh, as part of the new group of world service, we are that hope and certainty for the future. We have to light, to keep the light and love um, on. Yeah. Therefore, directions connect centers or points with different potential. That is magnets with a lesser or greater field of radiation and influence. Furthermore, no center is static in the universe, but everything moves or changes state, cyclically, spirally. Such unceasing motion or universal spirit is generated and stretches to a center of the centers, origin and goal of the universe, an infinite one. The direction towards the one or universal keeps it in its primordial radius all the lives or units of life arranged by power and quality or function towards the whole. According to this perspective, the alignment between two celestial bodies identifies an infinite direction qualified by the interested centers, the more potential in terms of energetic tension, the more intense and inflamed, thus powerful are the centers, the more they are able to translate and activate the energies captured along such a line without beginning or end. And uh, if we think um, of the master of six initiation, the case says that they become the uh, real energy of the plan, of the plan um, which uh, the executors of the plan, part of the hierarchy, the heart center of our planetary logos, are um, uh, entrusted to take care and uh, execute. So if a, a singularity, an initiate, become the real energetical substance and substantial energy of the plan. This is just what we have uh, read here. Imagine of the solar, of a, a solar logos or a planetary logos. They are the actual energy of the cosmic plan into, into form and into consciousness and into will. This is um, a new way of thinking also of us as a design to become a real and um, active part of the good, the true and the beautiful of evolution. The result will be a magnetic field induced by such an electrified path, for example, between a planet and a star or a cluster or the galactic center, whose width or depth will be proportional to the tension freed among the centers or pole of direction in the form we can assume of alternate or pulsing current. In its turn, the magnetism of the field generated, oh, sorry, the magnetism of the field generated moves the spatial substance, which oscillating electrifies itself allowing the immersion of countless new dipoles or magnets able to create countless new directions, spires and spheres of influence. So we are in this living infinite space made by centers and fields and their relationships, directions and cycles. Men can look up to the sky heaven, the apparent and fiery vault of space and try and think, love and create forms with planetary, solar, cosmic, universal breath or measure. He can follow its motion, rhythms and cycles which highlight directions, relations and possibilities of the spatial, spiritual energies and can do so by starting from what he sees and recognizes in the life of heaven as a relative but real sign a starting point and base of any revelation. 
So think now that Jupiter and Saturn are aligned in our skies, following with our vector um, uh, power, the power vector, which is the, the glance, the, our eyes, our conscious eyes, the third eye, actually, um, what, what power, what energy um, can uh, come from this um, loving glance to these two great Maharajas of the solar system, which are um, going into conjunction and later we are going to to deal with that or to look at the polar, um, sol, um, planetary uh, polaris um, which uh, in uh, in the book um, uh, in a book of how is it the um, I don't remember now the title but uh, is uh, Patanjali where the Patanjali uh, are commented. Um, uh, Light of the soul. Yeah. yeah. Uh, there um, it's reminded to the contemplation of Polaris gives um, um, or reveals the mystery of cycles, something like that. So this means that really the fact to um, contemplate our skies, it's not um, only relative. Yes, it's relative, but it's real and can create new directions for the future. This is a ritual and sacred action that we um, just on Earth, which is a little globe in a little solar system, in a little galaxy, in a, a little universe <laughs> comparing to the uh, subtle dimensions we can do from here and now we can create new directions new creative direction uh, between uh, past and future in the here and now just uh, contemplating consciously um, what we need to realize and the stars and the planets as they are vectors of qualities of the seven rays help us to realize it in group consciousness. According to such a model of knowledge of reality, the causes of every event can be found in the heavens, that sphere and vault shared by all worlds or lesser globes, and which is apparent, qualified and living. The inquiries on our celestial abode and its motions, therefore, seem to start from the natural and irrepressible need to understand who or what we are, where we come from, and, when, and where we are going. And the esoteric perspective supplies logical hypotheses and analogical correspondences descending from the universal to the particular, which every responding consciousness can verify by itself as an observing center of experimentation and co-measurement. Returning to the relation between objective and subjective, in Plato's terms, we can state that the solar system is a form and as such, the expression of an idea. It is or can be considered as the result of the thought of a solar being just like the person is the result of the thought of the soul or higher consciousness. The extraordinary evolutions that occur on each planet are accordingly the effect of ideas spread by the solar lord, reformulated appropriately by each planetary vicar for the purpose of reaching his collective goal, accomplishing his will, in its turn, a variation and effect of the goals of greater thinkers. This, as we have mentioned, happens through the cycle and the directions, vibrations or bridges between cause and effect, between invisible and visible, ideality and appearance. It has been supposed with a reasonable analogy that the process of manifestation, a process actually instantaneous that leads from idea to form, is of a ternary nature. 
one idea. This constitutes the energy coming from a higher plane. Ideas, as Plato taught, are the cause of forms and their model. They are centers of energy focused by the solar thinker in his turn established on the higher cosmic levels on the fourth etheric plane of its manifestation, 7.4 or animic, buddhic and intuitive plane in terms of esoteric tradition and fixed as archetypes in the fiery causal world on the first level of the fifth mental or monastic plane, 7.5, so we show that yeah. this is the cosmic buddhi plane, the fourth. This is the fourth systemic plane where our essence is as a fourth human hierarchy and where the seven ashrams of our hierarchy um, are focused. This is the fifth cosmic mental plane, cosmic. This is systemic, where our human souls or egoic lotuses and uh, egoic groups are. Astral plane, six and seven physical plane. Okay, let's go back. Together, these levels of energy constitute the so-called world of fire, more and more ethereal, etheric and rarefied as we gradually go up or penetrate in the invisible. As that great philosopher said, we reach the world of ideas through a second navigation, metaphysically think metaphysical thinking. The intensity of vibration of the instrument of contact must be that of the corresponding planes of substance, intuitive thought. Two, formula. This is an intermediate entity associating ideas. Pure ideas, atoms, aggregate into molecules in order to become thicker at the level of forms. This way they start being covered by a veil of fiery substance. The idea of man, for example, is the result of several ideas or aggregated atoms. Around the central idea of humanity, Others gather, such as self-consciousness, intelligence, co-measurement, uprightness, centrality, etc. Ideal formulas can be picked up by the causal consciousness, 7.5, 2 and 3, that level of abstract thought beyond normal mental circuits. The, yeah, the systemic fifth mental plane, the higher, where we have our higher manas or the human souls, as we said. Three, form. This continues the process of transformation of energy into force, potencies into precipitates, through the thought forms of the concrete mind, 7.5, 4.7. The emotional forms, 7.6, 2.7, down to the etheric and physical ones, that is the lower layers of gaseous, liquid and solid matter, 7.7, 2 and 7. The form is born. Thus the manifestation, this appearance, is completed through the subtle worlds down to the concrete world. And the idea is embodied specifically, suitable to places and times prescribed by the cycle. Okay, and we arrive to the fifth <clears throat> operational chapter, Triad of Cycles. These different stages, actually unitary of ideation, formulation and formation on that part of thinkers of the solar system, correspond to as many classes of cycles. The quality and substance of the various cycles are therefore different depending on the tension of the cause in thought. The solar thinker whose consciousness is able, as we can deduce by analogy, to pick up cosmic formulas thickens these energies in his own solar ideas. They are associated in formulas through his mental vortexes and those of the planetary entities, the formulators. These energetic vortexes or spirals are reflected 
through correspondence and conformity in the effective cycles of their vehicles, the planets. Such solar centers with their subjective and objective rhythms and motions spread the solar ideas associating them in formulas, which finally precipitate in forms. The so this, oh, sorry, sorry, Marvel. So this <clears throat> association between um, the trans Himalayan uh, way of naming things, Logoi and so on, and these names like ideator, formulator, um, it's, uh, we can say that is a Pythagorean and Platonic Plato um, perspective. Um, and it was um, presented uh, first by Enzio Savoini, which uh, was uh, an astounding disciple, Italian disciple, which translated into Italian all the Agni Yoga books and also some of the decays one. And so he wrote these books, uh, which are published in Italian, um, apart from one, into English. And uh, so it's uh, like in this line, this alignment uh, of the uh, third ray, if you like, uh, march on. Or anyway, Pythagoras and Plato um, tradition. And the fact that to think of our solar logos as a figure is a is a sort of uh, man, as uh, Decay calls him, and he's thinking, and and he, he associate he translates the cosmic ideas into solar ideas, and then he has his uh, centers, the formulators that combine his ideas according to their own. Uh, way of thinking of uh, fun or function, their specific function, for example, Saturn, third ray, in a third ray, manner, and so on. And in their uh, planet, they transform these association of ideas or formulas into their own formula, uh, forms. So think about the idea of humanity. It's, uh, it's only on Earth that humanity has this form as a five-pointed star, as the case as we have activated only five uh, spirilla, as you call spirilla, uh, spirals and so on, uh, or principles. But on Venus, humanity has a different form, a different substance, a different way of manifestation. But the idea, the solar humanity is everywhere, as we can also say the universal humanity, because humanity is a uh, a hierarchy, a part of the solar logos manifestation, which is uh, um, that part of taking consciousness of is the, the meeting point between the higher and the lower um, matter or substance and so on. So humanity is this, is the taking consciousness of um, is like uh, one um, soul, human soul, is one unit of a bigger uh, body, which is the planetary logos. And the planetary logos is uh, one organ more than one cell of the solar organism and uh, entity. So we are all um, in this oneness uh, and occupy a specified place or function. And from that perspective, that point of position or uh, consciousness uh, evolution, we serve. Okay. The hypo <clears throat> hypothesis that arises is that this happens through the cycle called synthetic, the composed cycle between planets, the simple or planetary cycle. The first of these is formed by all motions of planets that embody luminaries called sacred in esoteric tradition, that is, higher in terms of evolution. From here originates the name of synthetic. It is the most powerful and the widest, therefore hierarchically superior. It rules the energies of ideas. And we are going to see it. The second is generated by the action of, couple of couples of luminaries. It is up to the composed cycle to manage formulas. 
The third refers to the cycle determined by a revolution of each individual planet on its own orbital plane. Through this, every world collecting energy is spread into the system by the other cycles creates its specific forms, responding to those impulses in a peculiar yet coordinated manner. Yeah. Okay, first cycle of ideas. The synthetic cycle consists of the least common multiple among the periods of revolution of all the sacred planets. Well, you can check later if you like. They can be arranged and compared by symmetry of number according to the seven centers of a six-pointed star, thus making the spatial archetype or psychogeometry of the solar septenary system. And if you check this, you can see that the sum of the ray numbers along the three diagonals gives always 12, which is the number um, of love, of heart, of the second aspect. And you see that if you, we put the center number fourth in the center, we have this dissymmetry of these two active numbers, five and three, the more receptive number, second and six, and the more uh, assertive numbers or rays, first and seventh. The least common multiple is the smallest among the common multiples of all the numbers given. In this case, it is 840. In other words, it takes 840 terrestrial years for all the considered planets to find themselves in the same initial position, thus concluding a group cycle starting from any moment. So these are the um, period uh, or rotation of the different um, luminary, sacred luminaries. Sacred means that they function with the soul ray instead of earth is third ray, but as a personal um, ray. And we know that uh, we are pointing to our soul ray, which is second in uh, resonance with the Jupiter's second ray and our monadic ray, which is the first ray in resonance with the Vulcan, um, not discovered yet planet of the solar system. Okay, you can notice that only Uranus has 84 years, both from uh, an astronomical point of um, measuring and uh, the um, harmonic uh, period, which is, uh, like to deduce the, the sound or the interval between the relation of between two periods. And if you can see the percentage difference is very slow. So we can assume this period. And only Uranus has the same number. The seventh ray has this uh, perfection, both in manifestation and in uh, its harmonic, uh, sound or call and uh, 84 terrestrial years, which you uh, think about, it's seven times 12. Seven, the number of life, 12, the number of space, will and love. And we know that Uranus is also the first uh, scheme of the three of schemes of synthesis. So it's really like a permanent uh, mental atom for the solar system. Is a okay, here is the, um, the last uh, um, solar day, we call it, or um, synthetic cycles of 84 years, and is subdivided um, following its harmonics or um, uh, fractions. And um, yeah, just to give a glance and uh, you, we will see why it's here 1910 and uh, 2750 years. We are almost here in this uh, 
uh, seventh solar day, as we are going to say. Okay. Actually, this statement is not entirely correct. Indeed, if we want to check through the ephemeris, we would find that the planets deviate from their initial positions. This is due to the fact that the conceded motions, as we said, are harmonic and not arithmetic. Therefore, they are slightly different from the astronomical motions, even if only by negligible percentages. percentages. Secondly, as we have already highlighted, every motion is always spiral-like, so that no cycle, whatever its nature, closes on itself. Yep. Okay, that's the choice of the beginning of this synthetic cycle. Here we are. The year 1910 presents the right requirements. Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune, the giant luminaries of the solar system, are in the so-called cardinal cross, which is associated with cosmic cornerstones and which at present supports the cross of the four beginnings of the annual cycle, solstices and equinoxes. The four deep planets, as they are called for being the farthest from the sun, but also for their slow motion bringing about persistent and penetrating causes, ignite the center with their crossings, freeing propulsive energy to the four corners of the world. The whole sphere of the solar system is included due to the width of the planetary orbits concerned and is effectively a heart divided into four parts, able to generate the power of a new solar beat or impulse. But such a cross is also an aerial and a target, a dynamo and a goal. Let's check the footnote. Yes. So this is um, just to say that um, there are studies that demonstrate the relation between the planetary position of the four giants with the cycle of the barycenter or balance pivot of the sun and the solar system. Cycle called clover-like with a rhythm of around 179 years, which is very close to the um, period between two conjunctions between Uranus and Neptune, 171 and harmonically 164. So uh, with this cycle, as well as with the cycle of the solar activity, the solar spots. Yeah, okay, so this is also another astronomical um, proof. Starting from this date and going back in jumps or cycles of 840 years, at the sixth B, we will find ourselves in the year 3130 before Christ around the time conventionally considered as the beginning of our documented history. It is the time of Egyptians, Sumerians, and Babylonians. Towards the future, we need to add a last section from 1910 to 2750. And also the beginning of Kali Yuga for the Eastern tradition is really around this 3000 um, time. So it's really something began then in, at that time. These rhythmic beats have been defined solar days in analogy with the minimum planetary cycle of the day and their whole solar week. Identifying this cycle allows us to study history in a completely new way. Okay, we jump in attempt to to study this uh, week, uh, but this is important to say. The climax of the energies of the cycle is found on its apogee. That is the middle point, moment that balances in itself the top of the ascending energies and the minimum of the descending ones. It has the properties of the four, the middle between the seven, and it propagates the harmony among opposites that is beauty, balance, and symmetry. It has the task of reflecting the energies of the superior ternary in the inferior one. That is to reflect the first three eras in the last three. In the solar week, 
it historically co coincides with the period between 610 BC to 230 AD. It is the Greek and Roman period. The fourth era is the highest point of the cycle, and it is undeniable that the two civilizations born in it confirm this. All blooms in its highest splendor. In actual fact, the fundaments of thought are focused through philosophy. They scan with unsurpassed efficiency every field. Such power equally characterizes the East and the West. At the same time, great thinkers and teachers cover different horizons of the earth. Lao Tse, Confucius, Pythagoras. The doctrine of ideas that live in the fourth plane of substance is revealed to the world through Plato. Also, during this solar day, two extremely crucial events from the point of view of the inner or spiritual culture of the whole human history occur, the appearance of the Buddha and the Christ. Well, I let you rest a bit and I, I can go on a bit. <laughs> well, but just to... So it is said that Buddha was born between 500 and 567 BC, Therefore, around the beginning of the fourth era and at the end of the first half of the week, the Christ who certifies and teaches the laws of love next to those of wisdom of his predecessor appears in the descending stage of the fourth day, viz. at the beginning of the second half of the solar week, of the current solar week, of course. And we have four solar weeks in a complete uh, processional cycle of around 25,000 um, uh, years. The Buddha ratifies and leads to the glory of the first half of the solar week, passing the baton to his great brother, Christ. Also for reasons of cyclical symmetry, we can then welcome the indication of the return of the great master, announced by all esoteric traditions. He comes to finish what he started with his first coming at the beginning of the second half of the solar week, reappearing at the end of that great cycle. Here, here is a, an excerpt from a, a book that um, Enzio Savini wrote. The Christ doesn't come back at the end of the world, but at the end of the week, and at the achievement of the relative purpose. For its nature, there is no point in formulating suppositions around this event, which transfigures history and occurs in the hearts. We can only mention it as optimum and maximum. So we should do a pause of silence, actually. Uh, but uh, time is tyrant, as we say. Thus, victory is due on the seventh day. We are just at the beginning, turning over the soil to build the foundations of, for the new temple, the new time. The synthetic cycle of 840 years, as we proposed, distributes in the system the solar ideas the centers of energy or main magnets of evolution, whilst the compose cycles between planets assemble them into formulas. Such special spirits and spiritual energies then land on the solar horizon of each planet orbit that translates then into applied forces and finally into forms. Okay, just a, a glance on uh, the cycle of precession of equinoxes, um, because it's so important. So this is the, the time uh, the Earth takes, the 25,000 years to move, uh, not move, but just uh, oscillate uh, um, around the North Ecliptic Pole 
which is in the dragon constellation. This is the head of the dragon. So that the ecliptic or the solar plane vertical points to the dragon constellation. And our Earth tilted um, 23 degrees around, keeps 25,000 years to interpolate to, I don't know if you say that, interpolate, but to, to try to uh, serve the, the goal of the solar plane. It has some confusion still, we could think, but um, yeah. Okay, so it is the basic quality saturating, these are the precession cycle, saturating all events at intervals of around 200 years because we divide this um, unity or circle into 12 uh, qualities because we know that this second solar system story is based on the number 12 as we have to develop the consciousness aspect. So dividing the processional cycle into 12, you obtain the 12 ages or eras. And uh, each, of it, um, each of them is qualified by one of the 12 zodiac constellations or labels of the solar and planetary Hercules. Okay. It will be the star of Biga in uh, 3000. 13,000 years. Okay, we jump. This is the cycle that highlights the present disparity between sign and constellation as we saw between astrology and astronomy. As we said here in a solar week, which has we have seen covers around 5,800 years, this cycle weighs in, in significantly represented the basic quality of the special energy within which all terrestrial events are forged. The quality determined by just those stars seen from the starting point of manifestation, the equinoctial cornerstone in March. So again, the significance of the beginning of the first impulse of the first cause is given by this vernal or starting point uh, of Aries, which um, depends on um, this also cycle of precession. So we say that we are still in Aries, even if uh, it's not like it's a uh, constellation and sign do, don't coincide anymore. But as uh, the astrologers well know, the ascendant point, which is the di direction of the soul, what is rising at the east, uh, which is where the sun rises, uh, at least for the, uh, yeah, um, where the sun rises, is where all begins and where the crossing between the solar plane and the planetary plane, as we saw, the ecliptic and the celestial equator is, that is our analogical areas, the first impulse. And uh, even if we, we hope that astrology and astronomy yatus will be filled soon, maybe by the third dispensation or decade, which is said will start from astrology in, in these times. Um, so we have this um, uh, possibility to understand that uh, from that point, from uh, all begins. And um, is um, in this processional uh, cycle is said that is constellation and sign of Arias, which is doing that. We can think that maybe it will change in the future, but maybe in big cycles. <laughs> Okay, history thus, oh no, maybe I have to jump this, oh no, okay. History thus preserves strong testimonies of the succession of eras, eras impressed in their symbols, the Minotaur and the Baal Apis, Apis in the Cretan and Egyptian civilizations, Baal Taurus, the ram-headed sphinxes among 
Egyptians and the goat in Hebrew history, Ram Aries. The fish of the Christ, fish Pisces, and the man with a pitcher on his head announced in the evangelical tale of the Last Supper, clear reference to the servant of Aquarius. Okay, evidences of its rising energy are already widespread and mixed it to the emotional energies of the setting era of Pisces. Movements, ideologies, and tendencies most varied seem to gather, whether right or wrong, under this common flag. All terrestrial events are immersed into these new spatial waters, and the whole planetary project must be, so to speak, updated. Aquarius is the sign of service, group energies, universalization, communication via air or ether, and it spreads energies of faith, quality of faith ray, corresponding to the mental plane, science, right, and golden relations. Men will have to learn in the next 2,000 years to cooperate intelligently, globally, globally and consciously in order to support the new energies conducted by the cycle mm -hmm. and not suffer the repercussions of the drift against the tide. Humanity can live consciously and harmoniously on the planet and in the heavens. From the beginning of history and of the solar week, three changes of era have occurred. Each time these has required adaptation and innovation. So here is, is an attempt to fuse, um, emerge the, this uh, synthetic cycle with uh, um, the ages. The old solar week of which we have just begun the last day, conclusive and glorious, is therefore placed between the two constellations of the Baal Taurus and the water bearer, bearer Aquarius, which represent its alpha and omega. They trace with their infinite directions the two arms of a cross that squares the circle of the zodiacal horizon through the platonic era. Not only that, the present passage from the era of Pisces to that of Aquarius requires that the direction of the vital axis of the solstices, as we saw, is precisely convergent to the direction between Sun and galactic center, between the constellation of the Scorpion and the Archer of Sagittarius. Therefore, it is a time where cosmic cycles and directions cross with solar and planetary cycle. Let's see the slide. Here we are. So this is the moment of the solstice and the galactic center is here, the sun is here. So it's really on the me local meridian this um, fusing, magical fusing of gates, uh, as the Maya knew, it's really the convergence of three different worlds, planetary, solar, and cosmic. Okay, let's go back to the Baal and, uh, the, uh, and Aquarius, the Taurus Aquarius. We know that they are the signs of the which rule the new group of world servers, Taurus and hierarchy Aquarius. So and they are the two pillars of this solar week uh, in where we are all immersed, which is, uh, I, I uh, repeat, the main mother cycle of all the composed cycles. So it's like uh, uh, the most similar um, cycle to the precessional one. Uh, in fact, it uh, uh, intersects it uh, into uh, seven. Okay, the ball and the water bearer correspond to the two signs of the fixed cross Taurus and Aquarius, which bring, according to the teaching passed on by esoteric astrology, energies of fourth and fifth ray. These are the fundamental energy energies of the harmony through conflict and the, of the golden construction, basic energies that imply and feed all the planetary events of this processional quarter turn and the present solar week. They are also the rays attributed to the human kingdom, fourth and fifth, fourth, uh, our 
soul and fifth personality of the human kingdom. And perhaps we might suppose a cause effect relation between the former and the latter, which is accentuated in this period between Taurus and Aquarius. In any case, this seems to confirm that all evolution of present humanity is based on the perfect fusion between heart four and mind five, between art and science, between illumination and service, centrality and ramification. Again, unity and diversity, if we like. Again, the great avatars we mentioned earlier seem to embody the essence of the two signs. The Buddha, the enlightened, clearly recalls the light of Taurus. The Christ, once arrived as the savior, Pisces, is now expected to represent the perfect universal servant or sober. Okay, and we are arrived to the composed cycles between planets. Please, Mauro, if we go. The hand of the qualitative clock of the 12 terrestrial eras now points between Pisces and Aquarius, expressing a mood of strong transition from values marked by devotion, emotion, and materialistic desire to others tending towards globalization, scientific mind, service, and the universal. We must keep in mind this basic quality which colors events and forms in our planetary sphere these, according to the hypothesis, are forces transformed by the planetary being, starting from the quanta of energy of the formulas decreed and assembled by the planetary composed cycles. Oh, sorry, I jumped this. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because we have already said. Okay. There are 15 possible couples among the seven sacred luminaries, and I show you. These are. As considered as couple, but we can consider also three of them. Uh, it's always a composed cycle. And we are going to consider the main ones. Um, the first one, is the primary, yeah. First, Neptune, sixth ray, and Uranus, seventh ray, the square in the circle. It is the cycle that frees the solar communion and order. Neptune and Uranus can join around every 170 years or 168, the year of Neptune and the harmonic double of the year of Uranus, five times in solar day. This vital and causing impulse liberated in the solar space traces conjunction after conjunction, points or direction in the same sign or in the following one, needing 3,600 years to touch all the 12 sectors of the zodiac. Seven of these turns of primary conjunctions between Uranus and Neptune are therefore contained in a terrestrial precessional year the seven cycles Uranus-Neptune seem to divide the terrestrial precessional week into seven days or sectors. Yeah, and we know that 3006 is the number that uh, Blavatsky tells about. So I think it's called Pharos. So again, um, we have this uh, seven uh, into a circle. The revolution periods 168 and 84 are in a two to one relation or interval of octave consecrated to the value of the field. While Uranus goes up and down every 42 years, Neptune squares the circle. Every 42 years, their reciprocal angular relations, conjunction, squaring, opposition, squaring, trace the vertices of a square, the archetype whose simplicity symbolizes the static quiet of the manifestation always marked by a quaternary, which is the form of forms. Okay. I, I jump this, even if it's a wonderful uh, Biencio description of this uh, psychogeometry. For the moment, we contemplate the beautiful vision under the ages of 
Neptune Master of the Solar Community and Obi Uranus Master of Ritual Hierarchies. So here he is now, okay. Their opposition of 1910 between Cancer and Capricorn, beginning of the seventh solar day, is mirrored in their conjunction in Capricorn of 1993. The previous one was in the, in the revolutionary 1821 in Capricorn, and the next one will be in Aquarius in 2164. Primary impulse of present systemic cycles. In analogical formulas, this is a new initiatory rhythm exploded over the end of the millennium of our planet, culminating the tension accumulated through the 20th century and starting the new great cycle of restoration and rebirth. Okay, we jump this paragraph. Putting, okay, putting at the top the conjunction between Neptune and Uranus of 1993, we understand how we are experiencing the quarter cycle from 1993 to 2035, where the two are simultaneously descending towards the valley of Cancer. Now Uranus is in Taurus from 2018 to 2025 and Neptune in Pisces since 2011 to 2025. From 1910 to 1993, Neptune went back up from Cancer to Capricorn, whilst Uranus carried out his all year from top to top Capricorn. In the 20th century, their simultaneous motion broke the stiff forms of the previous cycle and dissolved conventions, customs and habits. Now, after the shattering part of the action, Neptune helps the new social combination, whilst Uranus consolidates the new rules of general cohabitation. Yeah, we have to think that um, there is an hysteresis or a delay between the causal impulse of the uh, conjunctions, uh, which we could think are uh, fixed on the higher mental level in, uh, in the human um, world. And uh, it takes a while um, before this can um, transform into a new uh, civilization. So the energies freed by the first composed cycle descend from the summit to rearrange the planetary societies. We had then um, a minor cycle, but a second uh, in the, this main triad of the composed cycle, which is formed by Uranus and Saturn which now are going to be squared till 2022, please. Uranus seventh ray and Saturn third ray, the cross in the circle, the cycle that gives the rules of synthesis. Uranus and Saturn can join roughly every 43 years, 1920 times in a solar day. The solar organizer, Uranus, and the planner, Saturn, trace through their progressive angular relations the quaternary figure once again, but in the shape of a cross, since the two following similar aspects, for example two conjunctions, occur in opposite signs, piercing the center, intercepting all the six axes or direction of the zodiac opposites in a, great, in a greater cycle of about 300 years. Indeed, whilst the conjunctions of the first cycle trace the point, in the case of this second cycle, they trace the line, the zodiacal axis. The greater cycle circulates and contains, the secondary one goes up and down, straining the opposites and synthesizing them at the center. Translating their current heavenly embroidery into formulas, since synthesis is obtained at the center between opposites and currently through unceasing motion, transformation and research. From December 2020 until the first, until the first part of 2022, climax in 2021, we are up to leave the square 90 degrees, a fourth ray aspect between Uranus in Taurus and Saturn conjunct Jupiter in Aquarius, 
as it happened reversely in 2000. The new group of world servers ruled by Taurus and uplifted and electrified by the solar hierophant Uranus is now in strong tension towards the harmony square of hierarchical group consciousness, Jupiter and Saturn in Aquarius, in order to help the Christ to save humanity, Neptune in Pisces. Okay, and we arrive to the most important current cycle because we know that on November the 2nd, in a few days, they will be in conjunction for the first time in Aquarius uh, heliocentrically and geocentrically, it will be the day of the solstice, 21st of December. So we are up to a, a, a paramount and epochal conjunction because it will be the first conjunction in Aquarius since the beginning of the 15th century. And it, we will have conjunctions um, in Aquarius for the next 200 years. So, and they form the six and five point star, the cycle of the planet and of solar consciousness. The first cycle composed of Saturn and Jupiter influences and sets up the planet of solar consciousness according to the sacred psychogeometries of the six and five point stars. We are going to watch a videos afterwards that form every 60 years. These every three cycles of 20 years or three conjunctions between Jupiter and Saturn, which trace in the circle of the zodiac, the triangle, the first plane figure. This is one of the most beautiful and precise discoveries in the study of the cycles. And it can be described as the rhythmic unit of the solar consciousness. First ray Vulcan, second ray Jupiter, third ray Saturn. The solar beat and breath that counts 60 in relation to the terrestrial year, these five years of Jupiter, or 12 years revolution, and two of Saturn, 2930. 60 is indeed the least common multiple between 12 and 30. Okay, here we can jump, but this we can't jump. So there are, uh, 42 conjunction in a solar day of 840 years. And uh, at present, um, so this star, as you can see here, uh, there are three, every three conjunctions in a, a, a same element of the zodiac, um, these 60 year stars, there are 34 stars since the first ad advent of the Christ seven uh, before Christ. So we are now experiencing an ending in 2020 exactly. The star that goes from the conjunction in Capricorn of 1961 to that in Aquarius of 2020. And we are, uh, yes, ending the 34th. If we accept the hypothesis of correspondence between a year, a, of analogical and symbolical correspondence between a year in the historical life of Jesus Christ and the mentioned rhythmic unit 60 years of the solar Christ, the significance of the present time, his final 34th year and the current 34th star must evoke a sacred sense of astonishment and expectation. Is this the star of resurrection that will elevate every creature? For sure, we are living um, a Golgotha time, a time of crucifixion from many aspects. Okay, I show you, with, instead of reading this, I show you the, the video, the wonderful video that one of our co-workers made, I think is here, Marzia and Patrizio. Okay. And we can uh, consider as a contemplation, a meditation of this sacred time or temple we are all living. And it will be also projected the next 31st of October uh, at uh, 5 p.m. GMT, we are holding, holding a meditation or search for this conjunction uh, with uh, all, all who wants on the new group of our servers to celebrate this unique uh, initiation, I think. 
for sure something will happen. Oh, sorry. Okay, so it's past two hours and uh, not to kill anyone, <laughs> we can just um, stop here and we can do another uh, meeting for those who are interested after the heliocentric conjunction of uh, Jupiter and Saturn and maybe before the geocentric conjunction on the 21st just to go deeper in this uh, wonderful psychogeometries, these uh, lords of love and light uh, build for uh, uh, updating, to update our uh, solar plan 
uh, of which our planetary plan is part. So there is that indication that says following the plan, the pur purpose will be revealed. And is exactly what moves this um, um, love for um, the rhythmic beat of the solar and planetary hearts to know uh, what, what they think and what us, which are the cells and atoms of our higher brothers, have to think, have to plan how we can build together um, a better future, a better here and now, actually. Um, so this is the heliocentric conjunction on November the 2nd, 2020. And this is the formula we have inferred from them from that, this conjunction. The planetary server, because it's, it's an Aquarius, asserts first ray aspect, because Maitreya is the first aspect compared to the Christ, which is the second aspect, and Buddha, which is the third aspect. So the planetary server asserts the plan of love and light. And we know that Jupiter rules esoterically Aquarius. So it's really the hierarchy, Christ and his or our hierarchy, which returns, reappears. So we see in this conjunction a sign, and we will have four conjunctions. This is the Let's see if I. There are, will be four conjunctions of Jupiter and Saturn in Aquarius, as I said, um, in 2020, 2080, in. Um, to 2139, 2199. So we can, uh, as Blavatsky and Bailey says, the return of the Christ was uh, this uh, conjunction of Jupiter and Saturn in Pisces. We can't think that the conjunctions in Aquarius can mm, tell us it could be one of the four possibilities for the reappearance of the Christ and of hierarchy. Okay, so next time we can dive into also the 2025, um, these five years, but actually, uh, really this 2020 is the main uh, step between this forerunner phase before the before this 2025 uh, crucial date. So before we begin with this, I can know the top a bit. Um, let us uh, if. Uh, we have to add something. Okay, okay. we can speak with the music. Why not? <laughs> okay. So, um, sorry if we were a bit. Um, long, but no, I think it's good time. And um, yes, um, as you can see, we have uh, something more to say about this, but I think it's uh, really, really enough. And uh, for the Australian people here, it will be uh, five, uh, PM GMT uh, late in the night on the on the 31st when we will do this meditation assertion but uh, we will do also a video so you can uh, check it on the TPS YouTube channels together with these uh, planetary cycles there and also on the website where you can find I show you something. Okay. Okay, you have here um, 
also an article which is called the cycle of a new group of our servers and the documents I'm we are reading it here in the page documents and at the end uh, you find this from linear to cyclical time and also these um, we are dealing with next time the seven steps towards 2025. So as you have, uh, uh, yeah, sorry, maybe you can put the link to this page into the chat now yeah. that uh, people could uh, sure. Thank you. directly there. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. And as you're doing that, Antonella, uh, may we say on behalf of all of us on this call and all who will be able to see this afterwards to you and Mauro and the group there, a deep heartfelt grazie. <laughs> yeah, in Italian. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Danke. Maybe the Swedish guys... Uh, mm -hmm wants to say thank you in that word. <laughs> okay, um, yeah, it seems complicated, but it's not. We know that the order is simple, but uh, the minds are complicated and need many steps to arrive to this simple contemplation of the perfection of the cosmic solar and planetary order mm -hmm. and only humanity has to relearn to function as a solar group that's why this um, the hypothesis to organize as a um, 49 vertexes and seven uh, stars uh, imitating the higher models is um it's so important for this prototype for a planetary order. For us, is the attempt to incarnate the breaths, the cycles, and also the structure of the higher beings. Um, as, as if in all our humble um, imperfection and fragility and uh, uh, dare, but daring, yet daring uh, at, the, at the best. Okay, so... I don't know if we like to return on our webcams and do in um, maybe a moment of uh, with a great invocation or um, yes, shall we close? Shall, shall we close with that, Antonella? And if you yeah, if we stop the screen share, people can turn on their yes. Yeah, that would be excellent. Turn on their videos. And will you take us through that to close? Thank you so much. Thanks to us. Gratitude is our main uh, points of unity and synthesis. Yeah, well. Okay, so sorry for uh, not having the time to do comments, but if we have the time, I don't know, Alexander, if you have other meetings or uh, work, for example, <laughs> ordinary work to do. <laughs> it's always, yeah, I, I think, uh, yeah, it's getting late in Australia, uh, in New Zealand, yeah. but yeah, if anyone wants to stay a little bit longer, yeah, we can keep this platform open, but probably uh, what is important is that to have a continuation of this creative lab, I think everyone would agree that it's a, a really unique sharing and opportunity for all of us to tune with these cycles because those cycles have projection in our group consciousness. So please let's continue this work together. And yes. yeah, if anyone wants to stay now longer, we can do that. Yeah. And this will be also a video put Absolutely. on the channel, TPS at least, and maybe also, I don't know. Uh, yeah, the 2025 time. Initiative uh, website as well and the YouTube channel, yes. So we can check the details, but... So you see, when you read a, a book, it's something, but when you give life uh, with uh, our vectors of power which are our, our consciousness and, and eyes 
it's really it's like uh, to me it's like uh, sounding a note for us all um, so that the human consciousness become more able to to trust the signs of the times <laughs> and not to be discouraged but to be in total trust that something big is really happening and after the conjunction of Saturn and Pluto last January which was really I think the sign of this COVID thing and now we have the Saturn and Jupiter conjunction so um, it's a great sign for a relief we don't know from if from the form point of aspect uh, briefly but for the consciousness yes so we we know we have mass uh, geocentrically not good till the end of january and we will have this squaring of saturn and uranus still till the 2022 so these are the main uh, uh, things to uh, <laughs> digest <laughs> So, but Aunt Ella, I just have to say that uh, at, in this moment, I am so grateful that my consciousness is part of one consciousness and that you're in it. <laughs> <laughs> you, you mean you all. <laughs> exactly. That's well, you all, but that you, you're a point in all of this as you share, as Mauro shares. And as we close, as you take us through the great invocation now, and thank you, Alexander, for offering if, if there are those of us who would like to stay for a few minutes after. But as we go through the great invocation now, um, facilitated by you, my dear sister, Antonella, let us be aware of the accumulations in this group chalice in this moment in time yeah. on this auspicious day and let us distribute to the need of the moment. I suggest you can tell the great invocation and I can just uh, guide a little focus and uh, assertion. It's good for you, Dot. I will announce the great invocation after I would, I... I would be delighted you, yes. And so you yeah. tell me when. Yeah, because you are mother language, so. <laughs> better I think okay so gratitude to all of us we know we are close to the reappearance of the Christic Buddhic principle We embrace all the light and love that this conjunction of Jupiter and Saturn will assert in the cosmic space. We want to serve the planet, the solar system, the cosmic infinite. Let's be in the total joy of the great service. And so be it. From the point of light within the mind of God, let light stream forth into the minds of men. Let light descend on earth. From the point of love within the heart of God, let love stream forth into the hearts of men. May Christ return to earth. From the center where the will of God is known, let purpose guide the little wills of men 
the purpose which the masters know and serve. From the center, which we call the race of men, let the plan of love and light work out, and may it seal the door where evil dwells. Let light and love and power restore the plan on earth. So much love. 